Well, good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the multi-district public image session uh, hosted by your uh, incoming district governor-elects. Um, in the top left-hand corner, if you would right-click on your picture, if you have not done so already, and include your district ID behind it, that would be appreciated. That way your district governors can tell who you are. We are asking if you would please remain muted at all times unless you have questions. Uh, there are two ways to do that. One, you can unmute yourself at the appropriate time to ask the question. Or if you'd like in the reactions tab down below, it's got a nice little happy face that says reactions. You could raise your hand, which will bring your picture to the front of the list. And that will let us know that you, are, you have a question. And that's more than uh, welcome to do that. And then, of course, um, this meeting is being recorded, so in the future, you'll be able to re-look at the meeting if you have questions or you saw something that you would really like to share with other people. Um, it will be available to you and be sent to you. Elaine, I'm going to turn it over to you, ma'am. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to all of our current club presidents that may be joining us tonight, our assistant governors, our district governors, our district governor nominees, district governor nominee designates, past district governors, but most especially, we want to welcome our president's elect. It is my pleasure to introduce my friends and colleagues, the district governors elect from the state of Ohio. From district 6600, we have Tim Ryan, Dale Smith from district 6630, Dottie Mead from 6670, and our very own Gary Baker from 6690. We all welcome you, and we are looking forward to being together in Columbus in March. Thank you, Elaine. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about public image. Um, and in previous sessions, we've talked about membership in the foundation. And to be honest, the only way that we get the word out about those two facets of Rotary is through public image. Public image is very important to getting people to hear a story and become interested in Rotary and our causes and support the, our growth and membership and uh, donations to the foundation. So I like to think of it as a three-legged stool of membership, foundation, and public image all driving uh, the service that we do as Rotary. So I look forward to our great presenters tonight, Keith and uh, Tina, and uh, I know you'll enjoy them. And uh, with that, I will pass it off to Tim to introduce Keith. Thank you very much, Dale. It's uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, exercise for me to be introducing a friend. The uh, Somebody gave me a bunch of information about all of the stuff that Keith has, has done over the years past district governor, lots of stuff with public image. He's an expert on this stuff, but I'm not gonna go into that. We're about to hear a great Rotary leader, somebody that I've known for probably 10 years. He was past, he is a past district governor, but he was governor during the time of COVID. And I can tell you that his essential was both noted and his uh, leadership was uh, essential at the time. And I think we're all grateful grateful. I can say that he is a man of passions, many passions. You know, rotary for one, for sure, animals and pets, music, boating, cooking, and his friends. We're about to hear from a great speaker. I don't want him to get a big head. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he's a wonderful storyteller. So Keith, if you would take it over. Thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate it. And, and thanks for the uh, the kind words. Uh, I am a person of passion and Rotary is certainly a passion of mine. Uh, it has been for 40 years and I am so happy to be with all of you because I've sat in the, the same chair that you're sitting in right now uh, twice as president of the club in Tiffin. And I know as you become a president, you can do it one of two ways. You can just sort of run through the procedures of doing your year, or you can truly make a difference in the community that you live in and in the world. Um, but it is crucial for you to be able to share your stories with the people from your town 
and from the world. And that's what we're going to be talking about this evening. Uh, as far as the importance of public image, uh, it's very often I listen very closely when I go to meetings, either at the district level or at the zone level, how public image is always the last one spoken about. It's always we talk about membership, we talk about foundation and <coughs> public image. Well, we're, we're no longer the redheaded stepchild. We are the uh, we are the part of of the three legged stool that gets the word out, and it is important for you as you go through your year to make sure that you select a public image chair. I know you're going to pick a foundation chair for your year. I know you're going to pick a membership chair for your year. You need to think really hard about who the person is that you want as the public image chair. Uh, you need someone from your club who is promotionally driven. Uh, it doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be you trying to do and, and multitask everything. You'll hear me talk about taking a skills and interest assessment of your club. And one of the things is think about the members of your club and about someone who may really be someone who loves to share stories and let people know about what it is that you do as a club. Uh, it, it's really important to make sure that that person is ready to work with others and to help develop the skills and the interests of other people within your club. So think about the people that are there maybe someone that hasn't done really anything at all in terms of a leadership job, but maybe it's because you never ask them. And so the next thing we want to ask is what kind of person is best to lead your public image team? And, and as, I, as I said, that person is someone with a, with a PR background, a marketing background, but again, is a leader. It's really important if you pick just somebody that happens to work for the local newspaper, if you have anybody that's still in your town that works at a newspaper, or you know somebody that, that, that does other things where they promote things, make sure that they're going to be able to lead because that person is going to have to make sure that he has other people underneath he or she to be able to get out and do the things that we're going to ask you to do. Uh, we have talked so many years in the public image sector about make sure you use the right logo. Well, you're not going to hear that as much. That's still part of our discussion. But what you're going to hear uh, this year is it's going to be talking about stories. It's going to talk about making sure that from an outward view, you tell the stories of what your club is doing in terms of a service project, in terms of maybe even a story about a member who the story has nothing at all to do with, uh, with uh, their part in your club, but maybe they've done some wonderful things in your town. There's no reason why you can't promote that that person happens to be in the Rotary Club as well. So that's the type of person you want to look for in terms of the someone who will be leading that team. Uh, and, and then you've got to talk about building your team, building your team through a skills and interest. The audit is so important because what you're going to find, I'm going to tell you a quick story about my, my club. Um, we, uh, during my year, uh, we gave a 10 by 10 foot tent out to each club. And it was already, uh, it was already marked in silk screen with the name of the club. And what we did is we got these tents through a, through a grant. And we then went and we wanted to produce, I wanted to produce a video for the members of our club on how to put these tents up. So I'm thinking, okay, we got to put this together. And what I ended up doing is I ended up taking a, taking a uh, phone and I videotaped the presentation, but then I needed someone to put it together. And I just asked one day at our club, is there anyone that knows how to, how to splice this all together and videotape it all? 
And this guy who ran the Salvation Arm Army, very quiet man, he never really said a whole lot. He did what he did. He got the bell out at Christmas time and raised funds. He said to me, well, I can do that. I said, you can? He goes, yeah. And he was sort of an offhanded comment. Well, I sent him the footage. 24 hours later, he comes back with this beautiful film that we distributed to all the clubs. Uh, and, and everyone was like, wow, this is great. And Jimmy was the guy's name. And he, from this point on, has always been the guy that I turned to. And he didn't start being coming a leader in our club until that moment. And so when you do a skills and interest audit, it really and truly is important to make sure that you find out there, there are things that people love to do, but you have no idea they love to do it. They may love to take pictures. They may love to photograph things that are going on around your town. They may love to be able to graphically design things, but if they're never asked, you're never going to be able to get them involved. So make sure that you find a person that is able to, to find people within your team that have those desires to do other things. And then find someone who loves to write. There are many people within your club, more than likely, that love to write stories. And you teach them about learning to write with the five W's, the who, what, where, and why. And, and make sure that you want to give them the wow, the excitement and be able to start writing stories about things that you do. And finally, to uh, begin to talk with and rally your troops. How do you get your clubs to think about the public image part of what we do? What you want to do is you want to be able to make sure that your club members start thinking about that. Start thinking about writing stories about what your club is doing in terms of um, in terms of a service project that you may be doing and sending that out to your newspapers or your radio stations or just getting the word out. It is changing the culture of many clubs because that's not been part of what you've done in the past, but it has to be now. And by doing that, by getting those things out, I have a firm belief that everybody has a desire to give back. They just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to give back to their town. They don't know how to give back to the world. Your part in your club allows you to do those things. And so by seeing a story that you do, they very well may say, you know what? That looks like the kind of people that I want to become involved with. So those are the things that we talk about, and those are the things that public image is all about. So as you begin your, your time and getting planning for your year, start to begin thinking now about who those people are and who you can lead. Thank you, Keith. And uh, we'll hear, he'll, bleh, hear more from Keith in just a moment. Um, but it, it's also my privilege to introduce a friend, and uh, that is Tina Ingram who uh, coincidentally show, shares a, uh, a liking for cake lyrics. Um, but uh, Tina is a Cleveland Rotarian. She's an advertising, marketing, graphic designer, and owns her company, uh, Marketing 101, which is a full-service advertising company. And uh, she has been District 6630's uh, public image chair for two years now. Thankfully, she will continue into my year. And um, she also, I should note, was uh, Rotarian of the Year for the Cleveland Club this past Rotary year. So please welcome Tina as she gives us a little musical uh, comparison to, to public image. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dale. Yes, I've and I have so enjoyed um, marrying the things that I love to do, uh, which as a marketing and advertising person, I like to think I'm also a storyteller. So this was kind of a natural thing uh, to move into a public image role. Um, so really excited to share, you know, some of the things that I've learned over the years in marketing and advertising um, to help you move your move along your uh, your public image. All right. So can everybody see? my symphony here. Is this the right thing we got going on? 
And no, we're seeing the text. Yep. Okay. Hold on one second. See, now we're going to go back to the screen share and we're going to be doing this one. Now I think we're screen sharing. Excellent. Okay. All right. So I like to think of this that truly your public image is like a symphony, right? So a symphony has your, your strings and your percussion and your winds and your brass. And each one of those is really fabulous on their own. But when they come together, they make the absolute most beautiful music. So that's what I'd like to think is we're looking at the different elements that come together to make your public image really sing. So let's see what each of those are, right? So social media, our traditional media outreach, your websites, and your email communication. So we're going to briefly go over those and kind of do a little more of a little deeper dive here with each one of these. So let's start with our social media. So why? Why? Social media is so important because in today's world, it is like your like your press kit. It is the, the element that helps paint the picture of who your club is to the world. And we do it with engaging photos. We celebrate our club accomplishments and we shine a light. I love to think that when we're sharing our stories, we're not just sharing about what Rotary does, but we're often shining a light on other organizations who their work needs to be known to other people as well. And of course you promote your club. So if you have an event, there are so many great ways to utilize social media just by creating a Facebook event, which is something that's separate from your Facebook page. And that's something that people can share out and say, I'm going to go to this event and the Lake County um, Sunrise Club, they're going to be picking up trash at Headlands Beach. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm free that day. All because I saw that a friend was attending this event. And that's the other thing about social media is it's social. It's all about who you're connected to. So when you tag people in your posts, all of a sudden your message starts to spread. It's like the old commercial from the days, you know, where she's like, I told my friend about my shampoo and she told her friend and so on and so on. That's kind of like social media today. It's also an excellent place to communicate with your current members. There are some people who really use social media a lot. So when you post a last minute um, change or a last minute update to something, Oftentimes, people might see that based on the notification they get on their phone long before they even get an email. So it's an excellent way to also communicate with your club members and keep, keep them connected. All right. The next thing that I feel like I've known pretty well in the media world is our traditional media outreach. So there's earned media and then there's purchased, right? So our earned is what we send out and hope that people will pick up. So that's our local news people. or And it's our, our newspapers, it's our TV stations, and these days it's even digital news. So we're going to start with writing a really great press release. So we talked about the five W's, right? The who, what, when, where, why, because that's all important information. But I like to say, and I know Dale likes this too, is that you add that sixth W and it's the wow factor. And this is the part about public image today that I think really helps tell the story of the impact of your club. So it's not even just why, it's wow, they're doing something really special that I want to be a part of. Or like um, like Keith had said earlier, how can I be involved with something like this? Or, hey, look at this organization that the local Rotary Club is, is impacting today. One of the things that I suggest is that you create a media list and communicate with your journalists. And it's very simple today. It's as easy as going to your favorite digital, um, maybe it's like akronbeaconjournal.com or cleveland.com and just look at who's writing about your community. Usually at the end of their articles, there's an email address. So you could send them an email and send them your press release. If there's a phone number, you can call. So you could email the information, call them to make sure that they got it 
And then maybe send an email recap to say, just making sure that you got the press release that I sent. Are you able to help us cover this fabulous event? And then always be sure to add photos that are showing people of action because, and include a caption in the photo, because those are the types of things that our, our digital media and our print media are looking for. All right. Another part of our public relations is writing. Um, I happen to be a writer. I have a journalism degree and I just love playing around with words. And I think that originally we've been taught to be a little stuffy in our writing. And I think as we're trying to promote the joy and the the, the personal fulfillment that being a Rotarian is, um, I think we should go ahead and start adding some emotion and adding some really fun copy to engage people. So for instance, and I apologize if you're my dog. Um, so this is a picture from the Rotary Club of Cleveland who hosted the Rotary Youth Exchange students in our district. And the original copy that I received from our, our coordinator, who's a wonderful fella, was just that. Rotary Youth Exchange students and their host families attended a Guardians game on Thursday, July 3rd as a meetup. Whoop-de-doo. But when you play around with it, at the corner of Carnegie and Ontario, Rotary Youth Exchange students cheered on the Cleveland Guardians and spent a fun evening on Thursday, July 3rd. They may have lost two to one to the White Sox, but the students from Spain, Argentina, Germany got to experience our nation's pastimes with their host families. So don't be afraid to add some of that verbiage that's a little fun. I think when we take away the notion that we have to be stuffy and formal, then we're going to have a greater impact with what we write. All right, so now we can talk about traditional media and the paid element. So that's weekly newspaper ads, local radio sponsorships, local TV, cable streaming, and even digital ads. So those are things that if your club has a budget or maybe there's somebody who has, who wants to sponsor your ability to get the word out, this is a great way to do that. And even if you just reach out to the stations, they may have nonprofit rates, which mean you could put an ad in for much cheaper than any other for-profit business. You could even ask them if they have a certain amount of inventory, and maybe that's commercials, that can be um, donated to you as a nonprofit. And oftentimes, these new out news outlets will design your ads or create your radio commercial for free. You can still provide them the photos and the logos, but they'll do that work for you. So there's a lot of opportunity. All right. The next thing in our symphony I love to talk about are the club websites. And this is part of your owned media that you have in your, your public image toolbox. Um, because your website could very well be the first impression that many new members have. So think about what you want to showcase. What I love to see is showing members having fun, showing members doing work in the community, um, using those images and videos that show people actively working together and making change. I say, number two, keep it simple. People are inundated left and right with, with so much copy and words. Like, honestly, in my screen right now, that's way too many words to share with you. But um, keep it simple and keep it bulleted so that we're not overloading people, especially on the homepage. Include a call to action. Have a place where you can say, hey, contact us to come and um, visit our meeting or um, join us or um, email us for more information. Make it as easy as possible for non-members to get involved and to get more information. And then I love doing my own internet research. So maybe if you have somebody who's going to help you with your website, start Googling other Rotary clubs in our district or Google clubs. Um, I love to Google clubs all around the world and just see what different people are doing. Very often, they might be using the same club runner templates. Um, so that's kind of easy to find how people are using um, similar templates to look really fabulous and engaging. 
So make sure that you take a look and review. And, and really important is make sure that your information is up to date. Otherwise, people may think that it's an afterthought. All right. Club communications, emails. So there are some people who just are not on social media, and that's totally fine. So a really great way to engage with them and remind them about different events is via email. So this is, I know for the Rotary Club of Cleveland, we send out our meeting reminders, our volunteer updates, special event invitations and updates. And it's just really important to use this as another chance to develop your club's voice. One of the things that I love about being in a district role is getting to know different clubs and how the, the voice and the personality of the Rotary Club of Cleveland is different than say the Rotary Club of Twinsburg or the Rotary Club of Menor. It's just different. And so to get to know all of these same Rotarians who have the same heart and the same desire to be of service, um, but no, they just have a different, a little different flavor about them. So make sure that you're using your voice in your emails as well. So people know exactly who you are. All right. I put together this really quick little top 10 kind of summary, and this is something we can share out with people. But so the top 10 ways to enhance it is to be consistent. And of course, yes, use our brand logo. Using the resources at your fingertips. I can't tell you your phone. If you have a smartphone, the camera on your smartphone is fabulous. Use it and don't think twice about it. Learn what makes a good photo. That's something we can, we're can we going to talk about in Canva. Writing copy, like we talked about. Staying active on social media as best as you can. Becoming friends with the local press. As soon as you make a contact, oftentimes they're looking for things to print. So if you can feed them consistent, great news stories, they will love you. Create a public image strategy and calendar. This is something I'd love to see when you have more than one person as your public image team. Don't put it on one person. So if there's somebody else who, who can't make the, if the public image chair can't make an event, the backup person can. When you spread it around, then it's a little lighter of a load. Review and refresh your website like we talked about, and then use these free or inexpensive graphics websites like Canva and Adobe Spark, and there's some others. I can't speak highly enough of what these are capable of helping novice people do. You become a graphic designer and it's so easy, even when you think you couldn't because these websites just make it easy for you. And of course, reach out to your resources from the Brand Center, Facebook groups, and of course, from the zone and from your district. So that is my little symphony top 10 of how to get the most out of um, out of your public image. Tell your story. I'm all about telling the joy. So as long as you're telling the joy, I think you're going to go far. So I think I throw. Yeah, I think I'm. I, yeah, I think uh, I'm. I'm going to continue. We're talk about uh, utilizing the correct artwork, the logo. So many times, people will say, "What's the big deal?" I used an old logo on on a hundred thousand dollar service project for a park, and it was like, "Why did you do that?" Why? For those that don't know, the traditional blue and gold logo that you've seen for years has been out of date for probably eight years. When you go on, when you go on to Google and you type in rotary logo, what are you going to see? In many cases, you're going to see the old logo. That is not the correct logo to use. And 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 why is that so important? Because Consistent branding helps to establish a strong and a recognizable identity. Up-to-date branding shows that your organization is up-to-date and is relevant, giving the impression of trustworthiness. Because if you look at, at our, I got to remember where I'm pointing here. If you look at the, at the logo that's used now, the master brand logo, which is what this is uh, on my shirt, it's different from the traditional 
blue and gold logo that you've seen for years at the beginning of every city limit sign. And you see it on so many things. Ask one of us in public image before you do a project to ask us to say, okay, we're going to be doing something. Does this logo fit what we're supposed to do? There are other ways of you to be able to do that. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But if you compare the logos of the Lions Club and the dreaded K word, the Kiwanis Club, and you look at our our logo, it's more up to date. It, it's 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 more um, we used to say in the 60s, it's with it. And it is certainly something that uh, we want to make sure that you know how to do it. And so what we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about the use of a tool that is available to you. But again, and I say this from uh, from the beginning, is that don't try to do this yourself. Get someone in your club who, who has an interest in doing this. And we're going to talk about the brand center. And Dale is going to tell you the first thing we have to do, and that is to get yourself onto the My Rotary account. Dale? Thanks, Keith. Yeah, and so to get there, first of all, you go to www.rotary.org. Um, that's key. And then you go to My Rotary up here at the top, uh, just to the center right of the screen. And uh, when you go to My Rotary, you will see two options here. Um, and we're doing this live, so we're not uh, doing screenshots. You see register or sign in. If you already have a My Rotary account, you would use the sign in. If you don't have one, as a president elect, you need one. Uh, that is where you access Rotary Club Central to set your club goals. It's also where you can see data about your club to help understand where you stand, with exa for example, with uh, membership growth and uh, foundation donations, et cetera. Um, so it's vital that you do that. Um, when you click on register, it will trigger you to enter your desired email address. You sign up and it will send you an email and response that will lead you through the rest of the process of signing up. Uh, for tonight's exercise, we're just going to go to the brand center right up here at the top. And with that, I will hand it back to Keith. And, and that's really important is what Dale just showed you. The brand center now is right there like a tab at the top of the page. And it wasn't always like that. And believe me, it makes it so much easier now to be able to go to it. So what I'm going to show you, these are some real basic things that we're going to do this evening. I'm going to show you how to create a logo for your club. We'll talk about some other things too as well. But as you see at the top there, the, uh, te the those templates that are there are there for you to use. Now, what we have here is let's produce a logo for your club. This is an approved logo. So you hit the create button and it's going to pop up. And the first thing I want to make note of is every time you do this, you're going to see what the current rules are regarding using it and what this template is good for. This template allows you to include your club name, your district number and all of that. And so you'll want to read through that to make sure that what you're doing is correct. And in this case, as we X out of that particular rule change, you're going to see some drop downs off, off to your left where what type of logo are you going to produce? Is it a regular logo? It, is, it, is it simple? And there are different things that those means that you'll want to investigate. But in this case, we're going to do a regular logo and we're going to do it in the full in the full color. There are many options, again, that are there if you want to that are all approved. We're going to align it. So in this case, we're going to put the name of our club below the logo. Now, if we can scroll up a little bit there, Dale, so we can see the current there. There we go. Now, if you look over to where we our cursor is right now, that's where you input. So right now, Dale is going to input the name of the club that we're doing, and it can be any club name. And you can put the state, however you want to word, word it below. You can put the uh, the district that's there, uh, and you get it to the point that you this is the way we want it to look. That's the logo you would use for any uh, top of your, uh, let's say, a news release that comes out. Uh, that with the blue 
rotary name and the gold wheel that's known as the master brand okay that's the that's the term that we we use so you can do that and then once you've got it the way you want it you're going to want to download that file and save it and you can save it in three different ways you can save it as a as a pdg file and that's one that you would be able to print off on a piece of paper or use to send to somebody you have a JPEG, which probably you're probably used to. JPEG is, of course, in the, in the photo end of it. And the real important one is the PNG. PNG is saving a logo that will allow you to have a transparent background so that you can put it on top of another, uh, on top of a photo so that uh, it becomes part of the photo, whether it's an ad or whatever you wanna use it for. And you'll see why that becomes important in just one moment. Okay, so that's how you create a logo for your club. You look at the other uh, templates that are there and you've got all kinds of things. And we're going to now look at the different, the different downloads that we have and we're going to create, uh, I believe we were gonna create a business card. Is that correct, Dale? You want to do that and you'll see as you look down at those um want to go to the view view all of all of the uh of all those templates off to the left okay we want to go up again and all the different materials there oh, we just went past it there scroll down just a bit again right there uh no that's the uh, okay um the promotional materials there we go and you click on there and you'll see all the different things that we can create and you'll see the ones that are available to you i'm going to show you how to create a personal business card okay and this is one that you can use for your year as president again you hit create and again, the rules are right there about what you can do and how to do it. And once you figure out, you've read through that, you wanna create your own card, you'll X that out. And then all of a sudden you'll have, if we scroll down, you'll see your card there. And you can decide exactly like the other example, what kind of business card you want it to be and how you want it arranged. You've got the logo, you've got uh, the the, way that that's aligned on the card and what the text will be. And again, you can go in and you can type in your name and your club name, and it will design it right in front of you, just like that. And you move down to your name and you can type in your name and you can put your title below it. You can put uh, anything that you might want to do, but always keep in mind, Anything that goes on that card must be rotary uh, involved. Don't you can't put a business name on there that you're with. Uh, that's not the way we we work. This is strictly for rotary. With your phones, make sure because you will probably be dealing with some international uh, friends that you'll meet over the course of time. And that is you want to put the plus one for the U.S. because you'll deal with people from Sweden and India and all over the world at some point, and they all have different codes. So you want to make sure that that's all filled out. The mailing addresses, you can put your P.O. box, you can put your however you want to word that. And then once that's all done and you got everything looking at it the way you want it, as just like in the other one, you download the file. And you're able to, uh, those are those crop marks that they talk about are when the card gets made, they're actually put in so they know where to cut the card to be correct, but you would save it as a PDF. And then that particular file, once it's saved, you can send it off to a printer or even better, uh, Avery makes uh, some business card uh, stock that has the, uh, you can fold them and tear them off and there's no like uh, rough edges. It's very nice and smooth and they will work with those. So that's how you do a, do a, a business card. Finally, I wanna talk about our way to be able to people of action. You'll see 
right down. We just had that there. There we go. Uh, there's a, there's the people of action posts. And these are ads that can be put together by you, by your public image team to promote things that you do. Uh, it tells you all about the different things to do, showing real life, everyday moments of your club, not someone holding a big check to say that we gave $5,000 to this group or that group. But better yet, if you're out, if you're out planting trees, a picture of your Rotarians planting trees. And what you're able to do is you can see just like the other templates that we had, all the different ways of you can do it. In this case, go up there to the select the verb because the people of action campaign is together we empower, together we end polio, together we learn, together we we uh, we save lives. Any number of any number of things you can do based on the photo that one of your people took that tells the story. Rod Stewart said it best. Every picture tells a story. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that that picture tells us what your club is doing. And so you can create those, then you download them and you can, and you can save it. Uh, and then that can be put onto Facebook or if you have the, if you have the budget to put it into the newspaper, there are different ways that you can use all of those. And I'm not trying to inundate you tonight as a, as someone who's going to come into the position you're going to come into, but I want you to be aware of what's there so that when you get your public image person, they're aware of those things. And at all times, please don't hesitate to get a hold of any of us to, to, to do that. And in just a minute, uh, you are going to see some things that you can do. And Tina is going to just blow you away with some things that you can do as far as, as doing graphics. I don't know how to do uh, the high-end graphic software, but she's going to tell us about ways to do some things a lot less expensive, and they're awesome. Tina. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And I know that um, we definitely want to have some time for questions. So I'm going to give you like this high level overview of one of these sites that we were talking about. And this one in particular is called Canva. Um, so Canva, so these are web-based applications. You can get a free version of Canva and you just go to canva.com and you sign in with an email um, or you can actually pay. And when you pay, it gives you some additional templates or additional resources. But truly what's fabulous about sites like this in Adobe Express is that you can design anything and there are thousands of templates that they give you to start with. So a couple of like Canva housekeeping things I like to share with people is my recommendation is that you have your club has a uses a club email to actually start your Canva account. And the reason for that is so you can have multiple people inside the account creating images or editing a video. And this way the Canva account lives with the club. So like, for instance, years ago, I was doing things for my local preschool and I was working with a similar web app and I used my personal email because we didn't have one at the time. And so every time a new person took over that role, I had to do a little bit of footwork. So my number one recommendation is to create your Canva account using a club specific email so you can have multiple people doing that. All right, so this is kind of like a, a little um, looky-loo at what the dashboard looks like. And as you'll see, like right here, you can have templates <clears throat> that you can work with. And they have, so here's what you can do. You can create event flyers, social media images, tickets to events, presentations. Actually, this one that I made, I made in Canva. And um, I have a funny story. I was at our district conference and I had the wrong laptop with me. Um, actually, I had the right laptop and the wrong cord, but I was able to use somebody else's PC since mine was dead and log into my Canva account and still do my presentation. 
So these web-based applications are fabulous. And of course, a video. Video e uh, editing is so easy. They also have a learning center. So you can go to their learning discover tab and just watch some YouTube videos. All right, number housekeeping, housekeeping tip number two is to create your brand setup. This is where when you've created all of your club logos and you've created them in a different uh, different ways of the color combinations, um, maybe they're PNG files or JPEG files, you want to upload them all to the brand kit so they are there whenever you need them. If you can see my arrow here, this one that says the Rotary Foundation, that is a PNG, so it has a transparent background. You'll know it's transparent because you see that gray and white checkerboard. And then this is actually white copy with the gold wheel. So when this shows up in layers on top of an image, that's how it's going to appear. So housekeeping tip number two is to load up all of your logos that you need. All right. So you start off where they say, what do you want to design today? I bet the majority of things that you're going to design are web images or social media images. And what is so great is the, the pixel dimensions that you need for Instagram are different than the pixel dimensions that you need for Facebook. So they have preset templates that make it really easy for you to do just that so that each social media platform has the right image. Here's a sample, okay? This is a template that I found just by going on to design and volunteer with hands. So this is a sample. This is what you can do in Canva, is you can take that sample, move things around, add your own logo, and change the colors. So all of a sudden, and of course, add in your own specific information. So you've taken a template that some other designer created, and now you've made something really fabulous in all of 30 seconds by just changing up the graphics. Here's a couple of layout ideas. Okay, of course, Keith just showed you how you can download a number of different um, people of action templates, but you can also just download the photos and do a bunch of different things. So we download a photo here and we put our type on top of that, but maybe you wanna do something different and you added a blue box with a, with a um, translucent um, gradient on top. So now you've made it look different. Here's another way to do it. These are simple, simple ways of making fabulous, professional looking graphics in Canva. And then as soon as you like something, you can duplicate it. So when you like this one, you duplicate it and change the photo in the background. This way it has that consistent branding look about it, but it's got a different message as well. So that's a really fabulous thing. Canva is really great when it comes to photo editing. It is super easy. My quick little bit for people, again, people of action photos. Yes, this is Larry Lohman and he's standing at a, at a lectern and it's a little boring, but when you edit off some of this, uh, that, that curtain, then you see a little bit more of Larry. And maybe if it's a part of a number of different images, it's actually kind of engaging. Here's one too. The original photo was a vertical and it was a really fun moment that Dave Jones took our statue of Arch Clump and was pretending like he was talking. So what do we wanna do? I wanna zoom in on how fun that moment is. So it was really easy to edit and crop that so that we can use it in our social media images, social media platforms. Canva has a mobile app and it's equally as fabulous. And so again, you can take a photo, add some text, and put it right up onto your social media pages. They also offer a content planner. So when you have a team of people, you can all work within the same account and you can say, hey, we have an event that's in three weeks. Let's make sure that we're gonna have a couple of reminders for this event. Let's run it on September 8th. Then we're gonna run it on the 10th. This way, you can put everything and organize it. And when you're organized, it'll go so much more smoothly. So here's some other content ideas of things that you could make, your newsletters, brochures, flyers. 
Um, you just never know when you need something that's a slightly different um, specification of size from Canva. Now, some people are able to use a nonprofit version. I understand that there's a lot of um, hoops that you have to jump through. I know our club pays $140 a year um, to have all of the really great templates and um, free photos that we can utilize with Canva. So that is definitely something to look into if you have the time and, and don't have the additional resources. So um, I'm gonna stop that share, but um, I know at our district, we've done some other Canva tutorials. And honestly, a really great place to go is just going to be to YouTube or, um, you know, and just Google Canva tutorials and you'll find some really fabulous ideas of, of how to make it work if you're at all confused. All right. And so now um, I see there's lots of things in the in our chat there, but I think we're ready to have a, a Q&A. So. Yes, we, we, we are, but um, we want to try to be respectful of folks time and we do have a few more minutes of a couple more things we want to talk about, but we do want to open it up for questions and answers. Joe. Yeah, I just, uh, if you're designing your website from scratch, where's a good place to go get a template to make it, I mean, to make it look like something other than a kindergarten project, which is what mine would look like. Um, something where you can get smart graphics for a startup website. Uh, my my thought on that is it depends first if you're using Club Runner if you're, or DCAP, because I know that both of those platforms have templates that will interact. And so that's actually a really good place to start because when you're loading up your events in your calendar within either Club Runner or DCAB, then it will automatically feed your website. Um, if for some reason you're choosing not to do that, then I know WordPress has some really great and easy um, you know, web builders that you can use. Uh, but I, I always recommend to try and start with Club Runner Camp first, if you can. Another good one is Squarespace. They're very easy drag and drop um, websites that, um, or Wix, those are really easy programs to use. And I will say that DAC, that, that DAC DB, which uh, a lot of, a lot of clubs uh, use, uh, also has the same thing as well. Just a word of caution when you go to incorporate your images, make sure they're images that you or your club has taken. Uh, don't go to Google, grab an image and throw it on there. Uh, there's a big push right now for lawsuits on uh, public domain or uh, images that are not truly public domain. They have copyright on them. So just be careful with the ones you put in. We got hit last year on an image that looked generic, but somehow had a copyright. And one thing I'll say about Canva is if you do pay for that $150 a year, it comes stocked with a ton of free photos to use. So any image that you make within Canva, um, when you go to their free photos, you know, search, that's completely fine. Those are yours to use as you want. Thanks. Uh Thanks, Tina and, and Dave and Keith. Kristen, you, you have a question? I do. Um, Keith had mentioned a skills and interest audit. I'm just wondering if there is some sort of survey template for such a thing. There is, uh, there is not that I am aware of, but it's something that can be put together very quickly. It basically was uh, a list of different things uh, that we would pass around to members of our club and it listed taking pictures and editing and uh, all those different things and just see if there was any any uh, any uh, chance of them uh, possibly getting involved because a lot of times it may be things like someone may work at a bank well they're going to be a treasurer possibly or this is uh, well now we're expanding it to include some public image things and and Kristen, I believe I might have one that that I've created for new members, but I, it's probably not in a survey format. But I can forward it to you. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. I think uh, several of us could use that. I'll I'll distribute it to the 
other DGEs and they can distribute it. Alan. Hi, thanks so much. Um, Tina, what a great uh, presentation and uh, Keith, fantastic. Um, Tina's got a really great um, graphics background and um, I, I've had a, an opportunity to speak with her last year um, uh, earlier on a, on a couple of things with Karen poking in, a, in our uh, club. But um, more importantly, um, it, you've touched on it, and Dale, you touched on it too, or uh, David did also about the rules and regulations of the logo, um, you know, and different um, backgrounds that might, you know, uh, where it could change the color or if or if you have to use white in a certain background and, and so on like that correct you know yeah and you could find that on the in the brand center as well i mean mm -hmm. i think the big thing is you know they they don't want it um they don't want you to like warp the the logo you know right. um they want to have a, a, enough space around it so like in in marketing and advertising, we have brand um, standard guides. And I know that the brand standard guide is available for download. And yes. so that's where they'll tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You know, they really don't like to have the wheel separated from, from the word rotary. Um, and I just realized I did that. So sh I'll, I'll change that for next time. <laughs> but um, even the best of us kind of forget. So, uh, but yeah, I think that's the important thing is it's all about, you know, making sure that the image is still consistent across the board. Cause I think that that familiarity um, really breeds another level of, of professionalism and confidence. And if I could in interrupt too, as well, is that just kind of put it to the back of your mind that any time you're going to create something that will be seen by the public, whether it's something uh, in a flyer or something in a billboard or something in whatever, feel free to contact any of us in the public image team to just run it by us and say, what do you think? Is this okay to use? Just do that. And especially if you're going after a grant of something that's of a large dollar amount, there's nothing more embarrassing than walking into a park and looking at the logo and saying, that was all wrong, you, you you know, and it's it just would have taken a question and we would find the answer for you. Definitely. And the, the last thing I want to mention is, um, uh, I know Tina's in the uh, Cleveland group and this morning at about a little bit before 10 a.m., um, they they produce their weekly newsletter and um and I did receive it, and um, it was introducing about NAMI um, uh, that's going to be speaking at um, tomorrow, I believe, um, in, in their 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 weekly meeting. And I just the way that they they do this, Akron does a fantastic job too. Um, their their uh, newsletters that you know come out, and I'm I'm getting them probably because I'm going to be a PE, but um, it's just amazing. And I, I just, it's something that I want to incorporate better in our, in our club at, in Hillcrest. So um, I, I just commend you on if, if you're the one that put it together, Tina, you did a great job. Thank you. We, you know, we've got a couple of the same thing. We have a team because sometimes I think the public image feels daunting and that communication feels like it's a big job. And I think it's okay to share, you know, to share it out. Okay. Thanks, Tina and Alan. And we'll pass it to Dottie now. We're going to change it up a little bit. And she's going to talk about our All Ohio Pets Service Project. Yes, I'm very, very excited to announce our service project for this year. Thank you. Before I do that, to, for all of our presenters and everyone and all the questions, that was an amazing presentation tonight. So every year, as you know, the presidents elect get to um, challenge themselves to do some kind of a community service project um, across the state of Ohio. Uh, your team of five DGEs have looked long and hard trying to find the perfect project for you um, this year. And we have settled on a project called On Our Sleeves. On Our Sleeves um, is a mental health um, 
program project. I just want to read one real quick paragraph to you. Um, it says that it was developed by Nationwide Children's Hospital, one of the United States' largest network of pediatric behavioral health treatment providers and researchers. Nearly a thousand mental health professionals and researchers at Nationwide Children's in partnership with other trusted experts provide their real world knowledge and expertise to the power to power on our sleeves. So what on our sleeves does is they take all this expertise and they have created kits for elementary school teachers. We know that most mental health can be recognized by the time and mental health issues by the time a child's 14 years old. And so this particular project is created to get into the hands of classroom teachers. Um, they are already working with hospitals across the country. And especially since they are housed at Nationwide right here in Columbus, Ohio, they've worked really hard with to find teachers here in, um, in Ohio. And um, so the kit contains uh, materials for a classroom teacher to use with her elementary age students. Uh, the cost of the kit is $25. So it's a nominal fee and that's all you as a Rotarian and your members in your clubs, that's all you have to do is come up with $25 for every kit. Um, think about if every member of every club came up with $25, how many kits that would put into the hands of elementary classroom teachers and into the hands of students. You will be receiving emails, you will be receiving some materials um, in your newsletters um, that will talk about what we're going to do. And um, I, I just think it's an amazing um, experience. What I really, I'm an educator, I'm 39 year educator. What I really love about this project is you as a club can take it as deep or as far as you want. If you want to get every one of your club members to give you $25 and send it and say, we've done our part, that's fabulous. But if you want to dig deeper and find out those classroom teachers in your district or in your club or area or your school district that already have those have teachers with those kits or don't have those kits but might like to have them, that's completely up to you. It's up to you how big or how bold or how far you want to go with it. But it's a great project. We know that our Rotary International president um, lost his brother to suicide. We know lots of people in our homes and in our own families and our own neighborhoods who suffer from mental health issues. Um, as an elementary classroom teacher in the past, I'm excited about this project. So you'll be hearing lots more. Dale, it's all yours. Actually, we're going to Gary to wrap up. Thanks, Dale. Uh, so it's my job is to send you on your way to Columbus. Uh, this is going to be a great adventure for you. I'm going to give you a couple of, of quotes. One from Paul Harris, the greatest gift that you can give someone is your time. And I'm going to also suggest that when you're out there as a leader, as a president, be the example, ring the bell, get a project going, help lead the club by example. But what you're about to experience with Auto Ohio Pets is just an amazing experience. Take advantage of the network, uh, take advantage of the leadership, ask any of us anytime, um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. It is just a remarkable, remarkable experience. And I think for many of you, it's going to be life-changing. You're wonderful Rotarians, and you are going to provide great leadership. It is an honor to work with you, and it is an honor for you to serve your club as president. And best of luck to you. Thank you, Gary. And uh, that wraps up our um uh, discussion for this evening, and we look forward to seeing you, all you great Rotarians in Columbus, and uh, for a great time there with fabulous speakers. So thank you all for attending tonight. If you have any questions, reach out to your uh, DGE or our presenters, and um, I'm sure they'll be glad to uh, answer them as they come up. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. And uh, AOP is March 15th and 16th? Yes. Yes, in Columbus.